Hi everybody, just quickly before I start the next video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and then you'll get to see when my next video is out. Although a career criminal since a young age, she was not great at it. Born in 1849 as Catherine Lawler in the Irish Republic. She once claimed she was married to a Captain Webster. Now there's no record of this at all. And she claimed she had four children with him. Also no record, so no one can say whether that's true or not. She was in and out of prison quite a lot. And at about the age of 15, she was in Wexford prison. Her next port of call was Liverpool, stealing money for the ferry and then carrying on stealing when she arrived. And in 1968, she got a four year sentence. Not a good start of what could have been a new life for her. From here, she went down to London. She found jobs as a cleaner, often stealing for her employers, before moving on to the next house. In 1973, she moved into Rose Gardens in Hammersmith area and got on very well with her neighbours, Henry and Anne Porter, who will come across again later. Then she went on to Notting Hill. Now here she was a cook, kind of, slash housekeeper, where she met a man and fell pregnant. After giving birth to her son in April of 1874, the man abandoned her. She then, with no money, had no choice in her mind but to go back out stealing and earning her living from crime. She ended up in prison many times. After 12 months in Wandsworth prison in 1877, she looked for domestic work once again. She moved around a lot from place to place, as she always had done, but she met a lady called Sarah Crease, which actually became a good friend of hers. Now, Sarah was the person that used to look after her son every time she went to prison. And I mean every time she went to prison. Now, January 1879, Kate found her final employee, Mrs Julia Martha Thomas of Richmond. They got on very well and Kate was happy, but her work soon started to slip. She was going to the pub far too often for Mrs Thomas's liking. After a few reprimands, only a month later, she was given her notice to leave. The day she was supposed to leave was the 28th of February. Now, 28th of February came and then it started to go by and Kate still hadn't found herself another job. She begged Mrs Thomas to give her a little bit longer to try and find a job first and Mrs Thomas agreed. That was going to be a bad idea. Now Sunday morning came around and Mrs Thomas went off to church as normal. Kate had the afternoons off every Sunday so she could go off to see her son or whatever she wanted to do but she had to be back by the time Mrs Thomas came back from church first thing before she went off to do church in the evening. But this time Kate was late and it was because she'd been to the pub again. Now Mrs Thomas reprimanded her again and she went flustering back off to church. She was so flustered that even the parishioners noticed that she wasn't quite herself and she was very agitated. She even left the evening service early. When Mrs Thomas came in, she went straight upstairs. Kate followed her up. Apparently, this is all a bit of conjecture, but they seem to think that they both had an argument. The argument got a little bit heated and Kate ended up pushing Mrs Thomas down the stairs. Needless to say, she didn't survive it. But she didn't think, let's run and abscond now. Oh no, she didn't. She had another idea pop into her head. She dragged the body into the kitchen where she proceeded to dismember it, starting with cutting her head off with a razor. If that wasn't bad enough, she started to cook up the body parts on the stove in a laundry copper. She started to tidy up all the mess in the hall in the kitchen. She wrapped the remaining body parts up in cloth and brown paper and put them in a box. All except the head and one foot, apparently, which she couldn't fit in. They say to celebrate or to um, drown her sorrows. Either way, she went to the pub again. While she was there, she offered up some uh, best dripping to sell which was actually the reduced body fat of poor Mrs Thomas. Although that's not definitely true, we don't know, but that was one of the things that came up during the trial. <laughs> Over the next few days, she carried on as normal, as if Mrs Thomas was still alive, coming and going as she pleased, doing the job she was supposed to be doing. She visited her neighbour friends, the porters, the ones we spoke about earlier on. She knocked on the door and with her, she had a heavy duty bag that she kept with her the whole time. She was there under the ruse of, my aunt has just died and left me a house. She was now calling herself Mrs. Thomas, saying that she'd been married and then widowed. And she was also asking whether they knew anybody who would be willing to help sell the items in a house and a house. Henry suggested John Church. So Henry Kate and Henry's son Robert went off to see him. On the way home, they managed to frequent quite a few pubs. Now, somehow, somewhere between pub number one and the end, uh, she managed to 
lose the bag. Now after this has all been dealt with, she asked if Robert, Henry's son, could pop back home with her and help her carry a box to somebody she needed to meet. It was far too heavy for her. Robert was happy to help. When they got to the bridge, she told Robert that she would catch him up. Moments later, he heard a distant splash, but thought nothing of it. The box was found the next day. A little more gruesome a catch for the fishermen than they used to. The half boiled remains of a body. Not a pretty sight. Now, back to John Church and Kate's downfall. Now, John Church agreed to buy the items and came round on the 18th of March to collect. The neighbour Mrs Ives thought it was a little bit odd that all Mrs Thomas's furniture was disappearing out the house and she hadn't seen Mrs Thomas for a few weeks now. So she called the police. The police turned up, but Kate had managed to scoot out the back door and disappear. She was tracked down back in Ireland and arrested on the 28th of March, still wearing Mrs Thomas's clothes. She was shipped back off to London and went on trial on the 2nd of July 1879. Seven days she was in trial at the Old Bailey. Apparently this trial was so notorious the Crown Prince of Sweden turned up on day four. Just before the judge passed his sentence, Kate was asked as to any reason that death should be off the table. She then pleaded she was pregnant. The court gathered a jury of matrons to be able to rule upon whether she was with child. Twelve women and a surgeon were sworn in and went off to a room with Kate to examine her. Minutes later they came back to state she was not. Now all through the trial Kate didn't confess. She even tried to blame Henry Porter and John Church at one point and the father of her child. But night before the execution, she did confess. I determined to do away with the body as best I could. I chopped the head from the body with the assistance of a razor, which I used to cut through the flesh afterwards. I also used the meat saw and the carving knife to cut the body up with. I prepared the copper with water to boil the body to prevent identity. And as soon as I succeeded in cutting it up, I placed it in the copper and boiled it. I opened the stomach with the carving knife and burned up as much of the other parts that I could. It was big news on the streets and there were many a song and a ballad and newspaper articles written about it. Mary was hung in Wandsworth prison on the 29th of July, 1879. Now John Church still managed to get the items from the house along with a few extra pieces of um, personal stuff from Mrs. Thomas. The house itself was put up for auction the day after the execution. Lots of people were coming by the house and picking up stones and twigs as kind of souvenirs of the whole situation, which is a little bit odd, I suppose. And the laundry pot itself was sold for five shillings. Now, Mrs. Thomas's house itself was left unoccupied until about 1897 because nobody wanted to live there. Servants didn't want to work there, people didn't want to live there, it was just all a bit of a macabre situation. And then the final thing was the missing head. Now, as some people will probably know, because it's slightly more up-to-date news, in about 2010, 2011, the head was found in David Attenborough's house. Well, not his house, but next door, where um, the dilapidated pub was. Um, they were doing some building work um, for Mr. Attenborough and um, they found the skull. Apparently the skull was carbon dated to the right time period and the collagen levels were so low, which would have been due to the boiling. And all the lacerations also went with the story that Kate Webster has said. So in 2011, it was stated that that was the skull of the poor Mrs. Thomas. Really, I've only just started. Literally, just about to film and there's a kitty cat already.